Since our last post, uh, we did get our final inspection and then we've been furnishing and, and doing some touch up and punch list items on the apartment. So now we're 100% done and we're about ready to get our first renters in in the next week. And so I'm going to walk you around and just show you some of the things that you might look for on your final inspection. And then I'll also show you some of the finishes on the apartment because everything's put together now. So let me just turn the camera around. Okay, so you can see we've completely furnished the apartment. So we have just a small sofa there. We did not put a sofa bed in. Um, for one reason, to minimize how many people might live here because it's a very small apartment being less than 400 square feet but also because a, a sofa bed would come out beyond the, the door opening, which could create a fire hazard if you couldn't open the door because the bed was out. And then, so just looking at some of the cabinets, we do have some storage cabinet under there. Full-size fridge, cabinets above. We have an 18 inch dishwasher with the dry setting, which is really nice. Um, here we've got some storage, a little Lazy Susan. And over on this one, because it's such a narrow cabinet, we put in like a spice rack. You might be able to put some cookie sheets or something in there if you wanted. And then to keep the trash and recycling bins, out of the walk, walking space because it is so narrow in here. So we've got this covered for that. And the rest are just the basic drawers for pots and pans, utensils and things like that. Um, so here's our vent hood and it just goes straight through the roof. Um, you might recall from previous I'll walk over here and show you previous videos we do have the Velux um, 14 and a half inch skylights so they fit right between your rafters they don't require any structural um, changes to your roof which is actually really convenient plus they give quite a bit of light and they also allow you to still get your your cam lights in the ceiling without taking up too much room over your your kitchen. So it's about that. Um, into the bathroom, we ended up switching out the toilet. We had a different toilet in there, but we preferred this one. It's a nice Delta 1.6 gallon, so it's not the most water efficient, um, but it's it's perfect for what we need in here. Uh, we did end up putting the glass doors, also a Delta. System and then almost everything that we have in here is Delta, and it's it's because I think it's one of the better mid-class uh, fixtures for your bathroom kitchen. You have a squeegee there so that you can squeegee it off, and then over on this side we have our stackable washer and dryer, which we went with the LG and. They're working really good. Quite a bit of storage in here. So you can put towels, whatever you might need for the laundry. You can get your laundry detergents in there, iron, and then a little bit more. And one thing on the final inspection that the inspector called us on was they call this um, a vacancy switch and it's required for um, at least one of your lights. So if you have a vanity light, which this one is technically our vanity light, it's this little Ikea system, which is really nice, but 
So it has the light there, it doesn't have it up on top. Now you could just have a vanity light there, but the inspector or the code requires at least one of your switches in the bathroom. So it could be your vanity or it could be your main switch, which is ours over here, which turns on these can lights, these three can lights. One of them has to be vacancy, meaning um, it'll automatically shut off if there's no movement in the bathroom. So we decided to put it on the vanity. We could have just as easily put it over here. Um, we also have a um, humidity switch on the fan. So if it gets too humid in here, it will detect that and it will automatically turn on. Or you can click it like I did here once and click it on and off. But if you click it on after 10 or 15 minutes, you can change the setting. It will turn off automatically. So in case you forget to turn it off, but it is good to leave it running even after you're sh finished showering so that you can get, get the moisture out. This uh, extra outlet here actually was another reason why we didn't get past on our first inspection uh, because originally I had that outlet tied in with this outlet over here from the bedroom. Um, but because it is in the bathroom, it really should have been tied in with these outlets. So it wasn't on the GFCI. When he tested it with his little GFCI tester, it did not break. And so that's why we installed the GFCI outlet, which this is the only one that you'll see inside the house. The other GFCI outlets are all on the outside. Um, the reason for that because on our electrical panel, um, we've used either GFCI, AFCI, or arc fault um, circuits, which are called combo circuits. So bathroom has a combo, dishwasher, water or garbage disposal has a combo, kitchens are all three combos. So that means the GFCI protection is here. Um, if you were to put your um, sub panel, say, outside or far away, then this probably wouldn't be the best option because if you did end up flipping the GFCI, you'd have to walk all the way outside to reset it. Um, but since this is right in the bedroom, um, you buy one circuit and then you don't have to have the GFCI outlets. Um, but all these other outlets for the lights, bedroom, living room, refrigerator, microwave hood, everything except for the air conditioner, which is this two pole, 240, 25 amp circuit. They're all arc fault protected, which is also on the code. So just so you can see how this works, all the bedroom lights on. But there's a little test button, just like you would see on a GFCI. And so it turns the lights off until you re reset the switch. Now it's back on. So now just going back into the bedroom. We've got a second TV here for, for the bedroom. And then here, we ended up putting a queen size bed in here, which preferably we would have liked a, a double just for the, cause it's a small room. But we ended up putting a queen size in so that you could have more comfortable sleeping quarters. Um, then here's the closet system. We've got a small, ironing board in there, step ladder, because a lot of the um, cupboards are pretty high. So it's likely that someone will want to use that. The good thing about this system, sorry, actually I'll go back. This is also an Ikea system, is this area here, you could put some long dresses um, or, or coats in there. So there, you do have that option rather than just having only the option for short hanging. Now over on the side, there's drawers and then also some hanging storage above. You can store suitcases above that. So if you have a high enough ceiling, um, which we do, you can get two suitcases up there. And then the nice thing on this is it's a soft, soft close. So that it goes ahead and it closes nice and easy. We'd end up putting a full-size mirror here so as you come in the bedroom 
you have that option. And then here we have um, the fan and the light, which typically are on one switch. And then you have a remote for the fan. But we wired it with a light switch and then a separate fan switch with the three speeds adjustable here. So if you turn the light off, the fan stays on. I just didn't want another remote control. We already have the remote control for the air conditioner. And so this here takes an extra box, of course. So you have to have the double gain box, but I do like it a little bit better than having the remote. And so you just end up removing the mechanism from the inside of the fan. You just throw it away or save it if you want the option of using it later. And then these little night lights, or because we didn't really have a ton of space here on the side of the bed, say to put a nightstand. So we put these little lights and then that's also an Ikea shelf, which is pretty narrow. It's only 12 inches. And then you have quite a bit of a little storage there for books and candles and things like that. So another thing he's gonna look for on your inspection is uh, your methane alarm, or your carbon monoxide alarm, rather. Um, and then also your smoke alarms. Now, your smoke alarms have to be wired together so even though this one and the one in the bedroom, they're only five feet apart, they still have to be wired together. So say this door is closed, this one goes off in the kitchen, it's also gonna set off the other one. One thing that I was not aware of with these smoke alarms is if you have an attached unit, which we do, so if your ADU is attached to your main dwelling, um, then they require that your fire alarms or smoke alarms from the ADU are also hard hardwired into the alarm system in the main residence. And of course that makes sense because if you were to have a fire in one unit or the other, uh, you wouldn't want the other unit to not know. Um, unfortunately, or in our case fortunately, because we have vaulted ceilings in both units and we do not have it's an older home. Our house was built in the 50s, and so the smoke alarms were added after. So um, we have all battery-operated fire alarms, smoke alarms, and so he did not require us to upgrade that to a hardwired system that was tied together with this, and the only reason was because we don't have an attic. So because we only have vaulted ceilings, then he did not require it, but keep that in mind. If you're adding an attached ADU and you do not have a hardwired smoke alarm system, then even though it has nothing really to do with your project, your ADU project, um, the inspector of the city could likely make you upgrade that system to a hardwired, um, or at least they're gonna make sure that you have all your smoke alarms installed. 